thanks, Gre uh, Greg. Uh, so yes, my name is Jaime, and uh, I'm a evolutionary biologist working in the field of genomics and metagenomics, mainly uh, in a research institute in uh, called EMBL in Germany. And today I will be introducing uh, a Python package that I have been developing for the past few years uh, to handle trees, basically to manipulate and analyze and visualize trees. Uh, in my case, I mostly use a package for uh, handling phylogenetic trees, but uh, as I will show you later, this is a package that you can use for almost any type of hierarchical trees. Um, however, there are some, some modules in this package that are specific for phylogenetics, uh, so let me start by introducing or briefly uh, defining what is phylogenetics. Uh, so basically what we are trying to do in, in phylogenetics and in evolutionary biology is to establish the evolutionary relationships between species. Uh, uh, it, this is mostly translated nowadays in, in, into the fact that we are uh, creating the evolutionary relationships between the sequences, genes and proteins that are associated to those species and the way we are the, the best tool we have to, to uh, analyze those relationships are through phylogenetic trees that are basically this type of uh, trees that I'm showing here. Uh, basically, the tips are, are the species or the genes or the proteins that we are analyzing, the topology of the trees representing the evolutionary relationships, and the attributes of, of the nodes uh, in the tree represent different evolutionary features. Uh, so why we need a, a programming infrastructure to analyze trees? Uh, well, the reason is, as in many other fields in, in biology, we are, we are uh, in a moment in which we are generating a lot of data uh, due mainly to the, to the advances in genome sequencing techniques. Uh, basically, as I said, phylogenetics is based on the analysis of uh, molecular sequences and by, by, uh, by, by increasing the number of genomes that are being sequenced, the number of sequences also increases, and then the number of analyses that we have to run in phylogenetics is, has exploded in the, in the last few years. So actually phylogenetics at the larger scale has generated a new field of research which is called phylogenomics. Uh, this is my, res my, my main field of work, which is actually a big data uh, field, let's say, because we need to analyze a million of, of trees, etc. So basically, all the analysis that we are usually, or we were usually doing uh, mostly manually in phylogenetics, we need now to uh, automate, uh, automi automatize the, the, the analysis, so that's why we need a library um, and some programming tools to, to really uh, make this uh, more affordable. Um, unfortunately, there, there were no uh, phylogenetic uh, programming infrastructure for uh, uh, analyzing trees. Uh, at, at the moment, I started to work with this, uh, so I decided to, to start uh, creating a consistent framework to, to analyze tree structures. Uh, basically, uh, what we want is to read, to manipulate, to annotate those trees with the features that we want to analyze, um, most importantly, to, to visualize in a way that it doesn't require one million uh, mouse clicks to, to uh, uh, set up the image as you want. And also this is the base for uh, later on implementing other algorithms that are the ones that are really extracting the information from the trees. So uh, ETE is, uh, stands for Environment for Tree Exploration. It's actually a meta package. Uh, the, core part of the, the core part of the package is a comprehensive API to handle trees. Uh, basically provides a tree object with a, a number of methods that you can call and also a programmatic uh, visualization inter uh, interface that I will show you later how to use and it is very flexible and it allows to generate a very uh, 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 um, uh, different types of, of trees. On top of this, there are other uh, modules that, extends the, that extend the functionality of uh, ETE, like parsers for biological formats, NIWIC, Philo XML, just a, a couple of examples. There are some methods for uh, phylogenetic analysis, uh, very uh, specific uh, analysis, binding to databases uh, like the NCBI taxonomy uh, database, which uh, is currently one of the main references for all the species uh, that are uh, being characterized, and also it provides some some command line tools for for most of uh, well, for some of the most common uh, um, analysis that you, that we need to run. The, pack, the, the structure of the package is very modular, as I said. Uh, so the core functionality, which is basically providing us with the 
basic tree functionality is isolated in, in, in the core type uh, module of ET. Then you have parser and tree view, which are uh, two other core parts of the, of the package uh, and provide tree visualization and some uh, basic parses. And then there are uh, several uh, modules that extend the functionality, as you see. And extending, extending the functionality is as easy as creating a new module, module that inherits the, the tree or the phylo tree or the clustering tree functionality, and you can uh, write on top of this. Uh, so just to give you a very brief uh, uh, example on how it works, what, what is the logic of, behind ET2 uh, or ET in, in general, uh, all you need to do is to import the, the class tree uh, from the main package, uh, you load a tree, this is the NeWIC format which is quite common in, in uh, biology, and what you get is a, is a Python object. And you can operate with this Python object uh, as, as uh, any other class. Uh, you even have some shortcuts to uh, query the, the tree in a very easy manner. You can traverse the tree and, and uh, find specific node, nodes, etc., very easily. And another uh, cool thing about this is that um, the, the tree structure uh, in it is uh, generated by by connecting a number of tree objects. So every, I mean, all the trees are actually a collection of tree objects. Uh, connected hierarchically. So if you get a pointer to a tree, to a node in a tree, this is actually a subtree, and all the methods are available in both in, in the root of the tree and also in the internal parts of the tree. And this is very, very uh, useful uh, for, for implementing and for analyzing interactively some of the, uh, some, some trees. Uh, there are a number of built-in methods in the tree class. Uh, I'm not going to give a, a detailed list, but uh, Basically, there are over 65 built-in methods for finding nodes or to traverse the trees in many different, using different strategies. Uh, also, some advanced options to dynamically stop the, traver the, the tree traversing uh, or starting from different points. Uh, functions to annotate the nodes with uh, uh, custom uh, attributes. Uh, functions to modify the tree structure in a very easy manner. Just, you, just, you can just uh, prune a tree, duplicate a part of the tree, uh, delete nodes, concatenate, whatever. Uh, it also has some options for calculating distances among all the, all the nodes in a tree, rerouting, etc. There is another special uh, set, of or set of methods that are available in the, in the basic tree class, uh, which are intended for tree comparison. This is something that we use a lot in phylogenetics, uh, but maybe uh, also in other fields, uh, we, we very often need to compare trees. Uh, so with ET, it's, uh, it's very simple to do this. You just have two tree objects, and you can uh, call the, the compare function in tree1 uh, using tree2 as, their, as an argument. And what you get is, is uh, Robinson falls this time on a, or, or a comparison of all the edges in one tree and the other, etc. Also, this tree comparison has some uh, nice features to, to filter dynamically which are the branches that you are using or discarding depending on branch support. I mean, some stuff that is useful in, in phylogenetics in general. Uh, I think the most interesting part of uh, ET is the, is the programmatic uh, tree visualization. This is a specific module that is giving you a lot of possibilities to render trees in a very uh, um, personalized manner. Um, this is currently not possible with the, I mean, it is possible with standalone, uh, standalone tools, uh, but it, it requires obviously a lot of manual uh, interaction. Uh, there's no API to, to create trees uh, uh, reachable, uh, graphically reachable uh, trees, and this is what uh, I'm trying to do with the, with this module. Basically, there are three main layers of control uh, in the API when you are generating three images. Uh, the tree style object is going to uh, allow for for general um, uh, to to set general uh, attributes uh, in the tree, like the shape or the or the branch scale that is being used, etc. The node style uh, is a set of attributes that uh, are available in every single node in the tree, which means that uh, as as soon as you get a pointer to an internal node, you can access the, all these attributes. You just set a few values, and then when you render the tree, you will get uh, these specific uh, things applied. And then there is a third layer, which is uh, quite powerful, in my opinion, to annotate trees. Um, basically, uh, well, this is called node faces. Basically, a face is a graphical uh, item that can be attached to individual nodes. And, and these faces are going to be 
automatically arranged uh, in the correct position, avoiding overlaps and everything, just by the layout function that is implemented in, in ET. Um, um, there are two ways, I mean, the, the, the tree visualization framework is uh, perfectly integrated in, uh, with the tree class. Actually, rendering a tree is as easy as calling the, the, tr the render function. So tree render will give you an image, uh, PNG, PDF, or SVG format. And it also provides to interactively browse the, the, the tree. So the same image that you get with render, you can get it uh, with show, but within a graphical user interface where you can click and, and uh, explore. Rendering a tree is as simple as this. You load a tree, you call the tree render function. In this case, I'm using the inline uh, argument here because uh, this allows for integration with IPython notebooks. Um, and what you get is a tree image. Uh, just two lines and you get uh, an image that is uh, representing your tree and your nodes. Uh, as I said, everything in a, in a tree is a, is a tree object, so you can even uh, get a pointer to, to an internal node and you call the random function, like in, in this case, uh, what you get is a partial image of, of this, of this subtree. We can complicate things a bit more by using the tree style, which is the first layer of, of customization. Uh, with tree style, we can modify the shape of the tree that we are uh, creating. For example, here I'm ch just changing the mode uh, for the rendering to C, which is circular, and we are changing the scale of the, the, the branch scale that is being applied. And uh, uh, we are also saying that we want to show the branch length. Uh, so we set this to true. We generate uh, the tree and what we get is this. And again, it is important, at least it was very important for me when I was developing this, that uh, nothing is overlapping here. I mean, this is a common, mist no mistake, but it's a common problem in, uh, in other uh, visualizers. Uh, when you get very dense trees, uh, all, all, the, all the labels and everything are overlapping with each other. So uh, it is trying to uh, avoid this uh, by, the by applying a layout function that is implemented directly. Um, now the style is the, is, the, is the the way that we have to modify individually the aspect of a given node. So it is uh, again, it's very easy. You just get a pointer uh, to the node that you want to modify. So you have the tree root. In this case, I'm getting a pointer to the node A, and then I apply some attributes. And the same for internal nodes. Then you call the render function. In this case, we are also applying the tree style that I, I generated in the slide before, and you get something like this, right? And, the, f and, and the, the, the last component that we can use for uh, uh, customizing the images are node faces. Uh, in ET, there are a number of uh, built-in uh, face uh, objects that you can use to, to uh, uh, add information uh, to your trees. Uh, basically, there are text-based fa faces or basic shapes that you can add, uh, some charts that are natively uh, rendered by, by the ET uh, drawing system. Uh, you can also attach external images, for example, if you are generating a matplotlib uh, plot uh, and you want to attach this plot to specific nodes in the tree, you can also do this with faces, etc. cetera, uh, and some specific, uh, some specific faces for uh, biological <coughs> representation of sequences or motifs or domains or whatever. So uh, the last part, and this is the most important uh, 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 part to understand how the rendering algorithm works with uh, works in ET is uh, is the layout function or or how the faces and uh, how the uh, graphical items are actually um, placed in the correct uh, in the correct area of the tree. Uh, it looks a bit complicated, but I, I will show you that this uh, that is not. So basically. Uh, ET understand a tree as a, as a number of uh, node areas. So every node is uh, actually associated to a virtual area that is, at the, uh, that is subdivided in, in five other sub areas, which are called branch top, branch uh, bottom, float, etc. And uh, you can, and each, each sub region in the node region is actually a virtual grid. So you can add, uh, uh, which is organized organized by, by columns and rows. So you, you just need to create graphical items and you just need to say, okay, I want this uh, specific element to be placed in the branch top position at the column zero, like in this example. So uh, here I'm creating a text face uh, and I'm adding this text face to the column zero at the, po at the position branch top. And, and, I, and I am adding this to the node uh, I. Uh, I'm doing the same with text two and uh, I'm adding it to the same column, 
and then another text uh, phase that is add to, to add it to the same position, but in a different column. And when you call render, then ET is uh, smart enough to, to decide where to put everything. So it's going to calculate the dimensions of every, uh, of every element, and it's going to avoid the overlaps uh, uh, between all of them. So as you see, the, in column zero in branch top, you have two phases uh, of different size that are, do not overlap with text three, which is uh, occupying this other region. Okay, this is the, the basically the, the way it works. Uh, but when you are using this in practice, what you can do is uh, really control everything uh, on, your, on, on the images that you are generating. This is a typical phylogenetic tree uh, representing not only, not only the, the relationships between the species that we have here, uh, but also a number of features that were uh, annotated in the tree prior to, to to visualization, and then a number of features that have been added, uh, just in the way that I showed you in the slides, uh, in the slides before. Uh, the the flexibility of the tree rendering algorithm is uh, is is, is uh, very large. So, actually, you can create many different types of, of of trees. In this case, we are adding special faces to represent some biological information here, like the uh, sequence alignment that was used to to generate the tree. You can label the trees and change color, etc dynamically at the same time you are analyzing. So in this case, we were analyzing uh, speciation and duplication events in this tree, and this is done on the fly when you are, when you are rendering the, tr the tree, because you can combine, uh, obviously you can combine the tree rendering with, the, with your own uh, code in Python, so you can dynamically control how this is being uh, uh, drawn. Another example of uh, type of trees that you can do, but uh, actually uh, you can you can render many different types of uh, of trees using ET. Uh, so far, this is uh, this is core functionality of ET, but as I said, there are there are uh, extensions, especially for phylogenetic, uh, which is what I'm using uh, mostly in my work. I'm not going to enter into the details because uh, it's too specific, but uh, basically there is a phylo tree object that you can use to extend the functionality from the tree uh, object, and then you have uh, tree reconciliation methods, orphologies, paralogies. Uh, you have a, a specific API for evolutionary tests and, and the, the calling some uh, external software that we use in phylogenetics. You can link to multiple sequence alignments and get images like this and bind these to, to biological databases. Uh, as I said, it is also everything that I show you uh, is also available as a graphical user interface, so you can interact with the trees. And uh, there, are, uh, there are also some other features that I'm not going to show, but basically you have the command line uh, tools that you can use to, to even generate the phylogenetic trees in a very easy manner, et cetera. People is using this in a very different, uh, uh, in very different ways for exploring large trees. In academics, it's widely used. It's used for uh, developing other tools and websites and visualize uh, trees there. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's quite flexible. Uh, I just want to finish by, by uh, uh, showing you an example uh, uh, I have been working lately, which is uh, about the, the visualization of very large trees, which is, I think, uh, one of the biggest problems now in, in, in the field. We don't have the tools to generate uh, a, a proper uh, tree of life uh, representation that we can browse. Uh, so I'm currently exploring different alternatives to do, to do this. I will be around during the weekend uh, for the sprint, so if you have ideas or you are interested, we can maybe chat. And the other thing I wanted to mention is that uh, as most of these, I mean, half of the package is actually, is actually uh, core functionality for trees. I was wondering, I don't know if this is, uh, if it would be a good idea to separate uh, the tree and um, tree view uh, functionality as a component for the Python community and then detach it from the phylogenetics. And well, that, that's all I wanted to say. Thank you very much.
yeah, the question is about the question is about tree comparison. Uh, obviously, there are many ways to to compare a tree, and you can apply graph theories as well to to do depending on what you are trying to do. The the, the tree comparison methods that uh, are currently implemented in in ET are the ones that are mostly used in phylogenetics, like the Robinson Falls distance, or or just computing what edges are present in one tree according to to the other, and uh, with some advanced options to automatically discard branches that are poorly supported by, by bootstrapping or things like that. These are the two, well, there, there are other special options, for example, to analyze, to compare trees that are um, uh, uh, not sharing all the items, uh, which is something that is not common in the software that is available, and uh, also to compare trees that are different size or that contain duplication, uh, duplicated items. Uh, but these are all the tree comparison methods that are currently, that are currently available. Totally. So the question was about the general use uh, of ET for, for other type of trees that maybe can be generated from uh, yeah, parsing any type of uh, information. So the, the answer is yes. Uh, uh, the, the parsers that are currently available are mostly the ones that we use in biology, NIWIC, Philo, XML, etc. But as I said, uh, the API allows to create trees dynamically in, or, or, I mean, just uh, programmatically. So all you need is to write a, a little piece of code in Python that is going to generate the nodes and connect them in the way that you want. So for example, um, it is possible, and I was using it for example for that, uh, to convert a hierarchical tree that is coming from clustering analysis in the SciPy uh, library, and, and you can convert it into this type of trees. Uh, or you can, you can uh, basically parse any type of information, create uh, the tree structure on the fly as you are parsing the, the items. If you, if, you, if you can extract the hierarchically um, a structure of your data, then you can create a tree with this and then you can use all the methods that are... The, the, the only restriction is that you need to, to generate a tree, not a network. So uh, not, uh, even a multifurcated tree, but uh, yeah, a hierarchical tree with yeah, some research. Uh, well, no, act actually, it's, uh, it's Evo tree is actually a, a tree instance that we use for detecting evolutionary pressures uh, at the level of the molecular sequences that are associated to the tree, so nothing to do with genetic uh, algorithms. Yeah. Yeah, so the question is about the graphical user interface and, and having the trees uh, in the web browser using JavaScript, etc. So the, the answer is uh, yes, it is possible. It is not in production, but I have been playing with this actually uh, in the website in ettoolkit.org. There is one beta uh, tool called TreeView that you can you can see. I mean, there I'm generating trees in SVG format, uh, which is directly supported by by the tree rendering. Uh, the tree rendering module, and then once you have the SVG, you can you can interact uh, with JavaScript. Actually, this this SVG uh, can be loaded with D3 library, as I'm using in the example, and then yes, you can make the nodes interactive as well. I mean, uh, this is this is actually very interesting, and uh, but I'm still deciding what would be the best uh, way to proceed 
for large tree visualization. I still don't know if JavaScript is the best option, if, I don't know, as we saw in the visualization session, uh, session uh, before, uh, VSPY uh, using GPU power to do this, I don't know. All I know is that we, we have hit the, the limits of uh, QT4 for uh, or, or, or at, least, at least the, the limits with uh, ET to render very large trees. Uh, and I think, yeah, this is an open question I will be happy to discuss with anybody uh, that is willing to contribute. I think we better wrap up there. We're a couple of minutes over. Okay. Uh, thank, you. thank you very much.